Hello pilots of the internet and welcome to Foldable Flight. In this video, I am teaching you what has got to be one of the coolest paper airplanes I have ever designed, and that is called Phenom. You can see the proportions of this are beautiful and it locks together with a novel locking mechanism in the back. And of course, I have designed a template for this plane. If you support me on patreon.com slash foldable flight for just $4 a month, you can get access to all of my YouTube templates. That's over 50 right now, and it's an ever-growing list. So with that said, let's see the plane in flight, and then I'll teach you how to fold it. All you will need in order to fold this plane is an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. And we will begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. Go ahead now and fold your top edge to your folded edge, just making a triangle. Flip it over, fold your other side to match. And now open your paper up and you're ready to fold your top point to this point here. And open that up, flip your paper over, and we're going to fold this edge here into the center crease, but I'm only creasing to this horizontal crease here. So as I line that edge up, I line the full length of it up, but when I place my crease, I'm just creasing from this point forward. And you can see there's my crease. I'll do the same thing on this side. Unfold, flip the paper over, and now I'll fold down along that crease. And I'm going to perform a swivel fold by opening up on this layer. And I'm pulling this corner and this corner so that they should land on this edge and this edge and my crease should be vertical parallel to the center crease so watch as i pull that it's my crease is going to be starting from this point I pull that all the way and line up those two references this and this and then i place my crease from that corner to this edge and then having done that i can flatten this little section as well Okay, and I'm going to unfold that back into this orientation here and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm pulling this in and making sure to land my corner here, my corner there, place my crease and crease it like so. I now want to go ahead and take this back across the center crease. So I'm folding from this point here down right along the center crease and be careful as you place this, it's easy to make this cross the center crease. You really wanna kind of slowly hone in where that bubble of paper ultimately lands and you want to make sure you're right on the center crease rather than crossing it if you can. And then we'll go ahead and redo the swivel fold on this side and fold this side back across the center crease as well. and your paper should look like this. I'm now going to fan this open, and I'm taking this crease that is on the center crease, and I want to land it right along this edge here. So as I fan that open, I'm looking 
to land that crease on that edge right down there at the bottom. And my crease should still be in the center at the top. And having done that on one side, I will now fold this in half and book match it by fanning this side open and landing this on top of my other wing. Just like so. And now I can open the paper up and you'll see it looks like this. We're now actually ready to go ahead and open the paper all the way up into this orientation here. And I need to fold this little edge to the vertical crease right next to it. Like so, I'll do the same thing on this side. Unfold both of those and now fold that same edge to the crease you just made. These are going to become references later. Do the same thing on this side. And one more time, we're now going to unfold and I'm going to actually take this crease that I just made and land it on that first diagonal crease I placed in this area. And do the same thing on this side. Okay, now be sure to reverse the crease that you just made rather than one of these other ones, but you're tucking that layer in behind. So reverse the crease you just made. And your paper should look like this. And now we're about to make some other references. I like to rotate it into this position. I'm folding this edge here to that edge and I'm not creasing all the way across. So this corner is landing at that corner there. I'm just creating a crease right here and I'm going to place a crease on this vertical crease as well while my paper's in this orientation. And now I'm going to place my corner here on that reference point and create a crease on the left edge like so. And my next step is to create a crease that goes from this reference point here through this reference point here to this diagonal crease. So I like to start by grabbing this reference point because that's the much harder one to place. And I start the fold of my paper right over that reference. And then I swing it and look for my reference point on this edge. I might check really quickly to make sure I'm on that point. I need to pull in just a little. And now I can crease from point to point, and I actually continue my crease to that crease right there. So when I open that up, you'll see I'm going all the way to this diagonal crease. So having done that, I'm actually not going to repeat those steps on the other side. I'm going to flip my paper, or well, sorry, first, I need to fold in on this existing crease that runs parallel to the center crease, and I'm continuing that crease all the way to the front. And then I open this up again, along that diagonal crease that's fanning out. And now I can flip the paper over and I need to fold from this point right here to just right of the center crease. And you'll see the paper won't lie flat as I do that, but I'm going to ignore the fact that this pocket's open and I'm just kind of working on either side of the pocket. And I want to land again my crease just like a millimeter or two away from the center crease at that top edge. And you can see my crease is going from this point here to again, just a little bit away from the center crease there. Okay, and that's going to help us with the next step, which is actually pretty difficult. So when I flip it over, we're going to be folding along this crease here, opening the paper up. And you want to swing it open and you'll see that the paper doesn't lie flat and you're going to use this crease here and reverse it kind of pulling along that crease. And you can see the first step is to kind of get your paper to do this. 
now we have this pocket here that we need to uh, place this internal crease in the pocket in such a way that it lets us lie the paper completely flat on this side, completely flat on that side at the same time. So I kind of pull the pocket open. I'm just kind of finagling it until I can really conveniently lay this side flat and this side flat and you reach in with your pointer finger and place that crease right there all the way into that point. And once you can lie both sides flat, you're going to crease from this point here to that point inside your pocket. So I'm placing this edge right here and you can see this paper goes past that edge there. And again, taking all the slack out of it by pushing everything nice and flat to the table. Now I'm going to sweep forward there and place that crease. So hopefully everything lies nice and flat at this point. And we're going to now fold along our center crease and do some of these same things on the other side. So I'm folding down on this side on this crease that runs parallel to the center crease, folding back up on the point that goes here to here. So just so you can see how we look right now. And I want to book match. We're going to create this crease on this paper first. So I need to land this corner on that corner there. And I like to reach in with my left hand all the way into that pocket and start to line these up. Okay. And once I feel comfortable about my alignment of these corners and these edges, I can crease all the way into that pocket. And again, I'm going to unfold, open my paper up, and I need to crease from this point here to just left, try to make it the same distance left as you made your first crease right. I'm aiming just left of the center crease. Like so, so there's my reference or my pre-crease and I'm going to flip the paper over. I can pull this pocket open and I just kind of reverse that pre-crease and again, I need to massage my pocket open. I can kind of pull, pulling on the pocket can be a good way to do that and push with your forefinger into the pocket, but you really don't want to get any wrinkles. So you want to make sure as I back out that you're really creasing all the way along this crease here and that you're using predominantly the guides of those pre-creases you made to help you arrive at where that corner of the pocket should land. And again, I can hold those two things flat, so I'm pretty comfortable with my placement of that corner, and I want to crease from this point here to that point there. And having done that, I'll hold everything flat and sweep this forward, just like so. Okay, so that was obviously tricky, but congratulations if you've made it to this point, you're doing great. So now we have a point where we need to create some preparatory creases that we're not going to use until the very end of this process. This is the most convenient time to make them. So you can see we have the reference point made by these edges right here that we folded earlier. I want to fold my paper down right at that point just to make a little crease that I can use on the other side of the paper. And basically I want to fold from this point here to this point here where this crease, make sure I highlight it properly, where this crease intersects the edge. So you'll find you have a couple little creases that are perpendicular to this edge. Look for the first one there. I want to crease from this point to that point. And it's a little tricky, but I like to, again, place my thumb right at that point And be careful as you roll it, slowly refine the positioning of your crease. And once you feel good about it, you can crease all the way from point to point. And having done one side, I like to kind of fold this in half, 
while pulling that into place. And you'll see you can kind of reverse that all. And I just line my wings back up, assuming I've maintained symmetry up to this point, then I can conveniently place this other crease in an identical fashion to the first one. Okay, and you can see at the end, that's gonna be the thing that makes our tail. But for now, we're not gonna use that. Okay, so now I'm going to fold this open just along the hinge we've already created with this crease. I'll do the same thing on this side. You can see I got a little wrinkling in this section, not a huge deal. And now I want to fold this edge here to run right along this crease that we have there. But I'm going to leave just the tiniest gap. And you'll also notice you're gonna have another pocket open up that doesn't lie flat. But just work with that and try to line this crease up properly, this edge up properly with that crease. And that's the guide for creasing all the way into that pocket. Just do that on one side. And again, we're flipping the paper over to fold another pre-crease here. I want to now fold from this point where this crease intersects my edge right here. I'm going to crease just to the point just left of my center crease at the front. So I'm just pulling that layer very carefully placing it right at that intersection. And this does matter, accuracy does matter on this step. And going just left of my center crease at the top, trying not to make this crease curve, but be flat throughout. Place it nice and sharply and unfold that. And now I'm ready to flip this back over and perform what is one of the hardest steps of this, well, the hardest step of this plane. So I'm starting by folding along this crease that we already have and make sure you really are folding on that all the way into this pocket here. And now you'll see this is all a bit of a mess and you really need to pull. And basically you want to reverse this crease here. So you can kind of gently massage that Make sure that you're along that crease and you're going to have to really pull this tight. And basically you want what is going to become an edge here that we crease and the existing pre-crease you made to meet at this point right here along this edge and very tightly hug to that. So I can now lie that really nice and flat and I have to place this crease. Determining exactly where that crease lands is the important thing, and you're doing that by pulling it tightly to this point so it goes from what is going to be the inside corner of your pocket to that point. And once you do that, you can now flatten your pocket going from that point up to the nose of your plane where this point is intersecting the edge just right of, or just left of the center crease. Okay, and now I can fold this in half and I'm going to try to book match this to my first edge. And a pro tip is to look for where this angle change occurs right here and try to make sure that you're placing it on this side at exactly the same point as you did on the first side. And you can see that's the high edge of this crease you're making. Crease just like so. And now I'm going to unfold, open the paper up, and I need to fold from this point here to just right of my center crease up there. Unfold, flip the paper back over, fold it in half, and now fold down like this. And again, I'm reversing that reference crease that we made on the other side, and I really need to pull this tight so that the crease that I'm going to make here and my reference, or my, yes, my preparatory crease here 
are meeting at the same point right along this edge. And I can crease into there, but again, you wanna make sure you're pulling very tightly to correctly position that. And now I can fold the pocket flat like so. And maintaining your symmetry at this stage is very difficult. I didn't quite nail it, but close enough, this is going to be completely fine. And now I'm going to fold this down and basically I'm just looking for the point here where these catch. If you pull this, you'll see there's a point where it catches and you go just straight up to the nose of your plane from that point. Do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to actually unfold both of those for now. And I want to fold forward opening on this hinge, right like so. Flip it over, do the same thing over here. And now I'm going to fold this angle. If you imagine the angle between that crease and the edge being like this, we're going to fold it into three parts. So think of each of these parts that we're going to make as being equal. Basically, I want to land my first crease along this imaginary line that represents the first third. So you can see when I open this up, I'm just a little off that line right there. And I'll flip it over and fold this side to match the fold I just made. And now I can fold this edge in to that crease right there. And if I folded my first third too big, this would be a little bit difficult to line everything up nicely and cleanly without rolling over layers, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, we're just folding in like so, maintaining the symmetry. And once you do that, you can close this up, close that up. And we're ready to work with these layers because you can see when I fold this back forward here, this back forward here, they're not going to lay or fit into the profile of our wings. So I'm gonna deal with that, but first let's go ahead and put this back, put this back so that I can open the layers up and lay my plane flat like this. Okay, so I need to fold the section of this that crosses that edge back across that edge. And I like to leave even just a little gap, make it inside, do the same thing over here. My crease lands inside that edge. Now I have to fold the section that crosses the bottom back up, just like so. Do the same thing on this side. And now I reverse this first crease we made and tuck everything in under that pocket. Reverse this crease, tuck it in. My corner's gotten a little tangled here because I didn't crease very accurately on that corner. That'll still be fine for the demonstration. Okay, so you can see we have the general profile of our plane at this point, and we're ready now to jet fold, but first I need to make the front reference crease, and the way I'm doing that is I'm folding my top point down here just past this edge. So I'm just creating a crease right like that. Maybe I want it a little forward of where I was, so just barely past that edge, right like that. And you can see now I'm going to be creasing from this point here. And I like to actually pull up my fin. Let's do it this way. I'm going to pull up my fin 
and fold the plane in half. Oh yes, oh yes. When you're teaching something, you remember the best way to do it just after you start explaining it in a different way. So let me begin by folding some layers behind and that will make our jet fold easier. So you can see this edge right here and this edge here. When I close that up, I still have that inner edge. Basically, I want to fold these layers around that edge very tightly. Like so, close this up, fold around this edge right here. Okay, and that locks everything together nicely. And now I'm folding from this point where it's locking, I roll all my layers and I'm looking for that reference point I made at the front. So you wanna be really gentle as you do this so you don't tear it at the back, but carefully start your crease at the back and you also, it's very easy to curve this crease. So work slowly, try to make sure this is a straight crease going from this point right here where it catches up to that reference point you made at the front. And if you don't exactly hit the reference point at the front, that's fine. It will just slightly change the thickness of the front of your plane, how wide it is or how narrow it is. And it's going to work well regardless. It's just an aesthetic thing really, or primarily at least. Okay, so now I've folded one side and I can flip that inside out now and fold my other side to match. So you'll notice my nose is now bending down instead of up. That's when I popped it. First fold, it was like this. I just pop it inside out. That lets me fold this side to match my first side. And I am trying to match my wings up. Okay, and now I'm going to fold my wing up at an angle that continues the angle of this bottom edge here. I really want to try to make this crease just a continuation of that edge. Flip it over, fold this side to match. Okay, and I can fold those down. I'm going to fold my winglets now. Your winglets aren't very big. They're maybe about that size. That's, you know, half an inch from here to the top of the fin. But make sure that your fin runs parallel to your wing crease right here. Go ahead and flip it over, fold the other side to match. And you can see we are virtually done. All that's left now to do is to fold our locking mechanism. And to do that, you can see we've got this little extra section that goes back behind the fin of the plane. And you'll notice a lot of times the section that goes past this edge here is slightly differently sized on each side. So look for the one that's bigger and that's going to be the side that wraps around in our locking mechanism. We're gonna leave that side alone for now. So my left side's a little longer here than my right tab. So I'm gonna work with my right tab and I want to fold forward over this edge. And basically I'm inside reversing this little section here and tucking that forward as far as it will go. I know that's a little tricky to see, but you can see I'm folding over this edge here and that edge at the same time. And I can push that nice and flat. And now I want to essentially do the same thing here, but put both of these edges inside 
the tail fin. So I'm opening that up, tucking the layers into the tail fin as far as they'll go, like so, and that creates the pocket that we're now about to wrap this into and tuck that around just like so. And go ahead and try to press everything nice and flat. Get it to lock together really nicely. Fold your wings out. And there you go. You have a finished airplane. Now I will tell you, you're going to want a decent amount of up elevator on the back of this plane. As you uh, fly this, it's going to dive down if you don't bend the back edges up a bit, maybe even more than that. It also will have a tendency to spiral when you're first throwing it, and you're going to want to make adjustments both to the elevators and to the rudder, the central tail fin of the plane. So if it's spiraling clockwise, or sorry, counterclockwise, you need to bend this elevator up more than the other one, and give it a little right rudder. If it's spinning clockwise, you'll bend this elevator up more and give it left rudder by bending the rudder slightly to the left. And those adjustments, you can get this plane to fly really, really well. So with that, thank you so much for watching and good luck flying your plane.